and see. Righto guys, here we are on a lovely cool winter's morning and uh, yeah we've just about hit a thousand kilometers on the Moto Marini Xcape so I figured let's do a thousand kilometer review. Has anything gone wrong? How's braking going? Uh, let's talk about it. So let's get into it. <laughs> Righto, so to first off to begin with, this is the Moto Marini X Cape 650. I have this bike for the winter. Uh, it is a long term press bike on loan from Moto Marini New Zealand. Um, so I've got this until August, September, uh, depending on how Moto Marini NZ feels. And the goal is to sort of see what this bike is like to live with. So to start things off, we got this bike, it was essentially brand new, so we have to get it through its break-in period. So for the Moto Marini, that's a thousand kilometers. It has done, let's have a quick look on the Odo. So the Moto Marini X-Cape has officially done, right, so the, the bike has done 987 kilometers since we picked it up. So that means basically by the time it gets back up to Auckland to Moto Marini HQ, it will be ready for its thousand kilometer service. In the time we've had the Mona Marini, we've had it about three weeks or so, we've done a few interesting things with it. We've done some gravel roads, we've done some touring riding, we've done some highway riding, and we've even pootled around Cambridge a little bit. It's done as expected, it's done nothing wrong. Um, on the highway, it has been quite comfortable to be honest. I have noted that I would like a little bit more room in the leg department on my trip back from the motorcycle show last weekend. Um, I did start to sort of feel the need to stretch my legs uh, after about an hour and a half in the saddle um, but you can actually remove these very thick rubbers uh, and you get down to a very nice serrated foot peg there that's a very good platform for gravel roads. In the gravel it's a nice comfortable bike. There are a few things I love about this bike in the gravel. First off is the adjustable handlebar you can move it forward or backward uh, from the center position on the top yoke and also over here You've got these beautiful cushiony bits that come down off the main saddle. So basically you're standing up and you can lock your knee in there and you're not basically banging your knees against angled plastic. It's a really cool design and I love it. Now the windscreen here is adjustable and this is literally the only place on the bike where I have had something go remotely wrong. And it wasn't even something that you'd really call a big deal. Uh, the adjustments, well, the screw on the adjuster here backed itself out a little bit from obviously vibration. Just got the Allen key out, tightened it up again. There's no dramas at all. Um, that is literally the only thing that has happened in the nearly thousand kilometers of riding. One small bolt backing out. Don't really know what to say about that other than it's pretty damn good. Now this bike has an 18 litre fuel tank and I have been keeping track of the fuel economy over the last 987 kilometres and I'm quite happy with the economy I've been getting. It's been getting better and better as the engine has progressed through its break-in period. It started off in the high 5 litres per 100 kilometres, now we are in the uh, mid 4s uh, per 100 kilometres. So I tested it, I nearly ran it out of gas um, but I chickened out at the last minute. I could have gotten it home. Um, but essentially I got 360 odd k's out of the fuel tank um, before I filled it up. I used 15 and a half litres, I still had 2 and a half litres in the tank. So theoretically if you're playing nice you can get 400 k's out of the tank of this easy. Next off, the brakes. Now that's the party piece of the Moto Marini x cab right there. Not only are they Brembo brakes, uh, two discs at the front, one at the back, You've also got switchable ABS, which you do not have on any other bike in the 650cc Lambs class. And that is a nice thing to know you've got when you want to take a gravel road, say. Um, it's a bit of fun locking up the rear wheel and doing skids, but also it's there for safety. Uh, it allows you to sort of explore a little bit more. Uh, the main hindrances to you exploring further and further afield are the relatively low ground clearance. It's 175 millimeters. Um, and the fact that this bike currently doesn't have a bash plate, but hopefully Moto Marini NZ will give us one of those to install and we can chuck it on, see how well it protects the engine and also feel that little bit more comfortable on gravel roads. Right, so one of the cool things about the Moto Marini, you look at it and it's got these 
great big LED headlights. I haven't had a chance to test those out yet. I do have a plan next weekend when I have no kids in the house to go for a night ride and see just how good those are. I'll try and film it, but I'm not too sure how well the DJI action camera will take a night ride. So we'll take that with a grain of salt. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but I'm looking forward to trying these out in the uh, night time. Uh, so far, I'm very happy with them. Uh, you've also got LED indicators and honestly one of my favourite things about motorcycles is when you have your switches and they fall to hand nicely and on the Moto Marini it's just that. Particularly the indicator switch, it's got a nice feel to it. You can click it in and you know that you've actually disengaged the indicators which a lot of bikes these days are very vague. Now comfort wise, like I said earlier, I uh, wouldn't mind a little bit more legroom but it's not a big deal, especially on longer rides. You can just hang your leg down there or remove the foot peg rubber and that drops your foot down significantly and gives you access to the cleated foot peg. The reach to the handlebars is really nice. As I said, you can adjust it forward or backwards um, and you've got adjustable levers here. One thing I'm going to look at doing is just shifting the perches inward a little bit just so that I can get a little bit of a nicer grip onto this beautiful uh, lever up here. Alright, uh, last thing, the TFT on this bike is very cool. It is probably one of its biggest selling points other than the fact that the bike has switchable ABS. Uh, it doesn't have integrated maps but it does have uh, phone integration so you can control your phone, uh, phone calls or music straight off the dashboard uh, just using the switch gear on the left hand handlebar. It's really really cool, nice and intuitive. Simply just open up Bluetooth on your phone, connect to the bike and you're done. Uh, one thing I have noted with that though is if you're using an Intercom like a Cardo, which I use, uh, you can link your Cardo directly to the bike. I've just left it connected to my phone and if I've got my phone and Cardo connected before I turn the bike on, uh, the phone will start trying to play music through the bike. So you have to sort of just go click back to the Cardo and you're away. Or turn the bike on first then turn on your Cardo and same thing. Righto, so the last thing I wanted to go over is how the bike's physically wearing in. Uh, are there any scratches from use? Is the plastic starting to fade or anything like that? And I am quite pleased to report that there is nothing wrong with the bike in terms of build quality. Um, as you'd expect, um, that's going to be one of the biggest things most people are going to sort of be a bit shy on apart from the country of origin. And I can honestly say after a thousand kilometers, apart from that one bolt backing out, this bike has performed flawlessly. Uh, it is still looking great, uh, there are no scratches in the plastics. Uh, nothing started to vibrate loose or anything. It is looking and feeling very good. So in terms of what we have planned coming up with this bike, uh, we still want to be riding this as much as possible. So poor old Rosie the Rally is going to be stuck in the garage for the time being. Um, and we're going to be focusing on this. So there are a few cool rides I want to do, some exploration routes to find the centre of the North Island for instance, uh, some more gravel road backcountry riding and just enjoying the thing for its superior touring comfort over Rosie the Rally. Uh, you can't get over how much more comfortable this bike is on the open road and with it being winter you want to be comfortable. Um, we're going to do some mods like I said earlier, hopefully Moto Marini NZ gives us some mods to put on it. I'm hoping for the skid plate, maybe the accessory windscreen, which is a little bit taller. Um, and yeah, we'll see how we go. Um, basically, I just want to make sure that I am using this bike as I imagine an owner would, so I can give you the feedback on what this bike is like as an ownership experience. So once it's gone for its thousand kilometer service, I will fill you in on how much to expect to pay for your servicing needs. I also hope to cover off more interesting things, more useful things to know like what the actual fuel economy levels out at um, and does anything go wrong with this? So far Moto Marini NZ has said that they have had zero warranty claims on these bikes. Uh, they've been here for a year in the country now so all things point to good things. So if you've gotten this far in the video thank you very much for watching the full vid does great things for the YouTube algorithm. If you don't mind, if you could like, and if you haven't already subscribed, that would do great things as well uh, in helping grow the channel. Um, if you have any questions, anything you'd like me to cover in an upcoming video on the Moto Marini Escape, leave a comment down below. 
Uh, until next time, stay rubber side down and I'll catch you on the next ride. Mm.